So, uh, Golfing FF, that's Golfing Firefighter, a uh, friend of mine from Las Vegas who's a firefighter half the time and a golf teacher half the time. All right. He wants to know about um, what we were just talking about. A lot of people would be scared of doing this because it seems like everybody in the world is trying to get more shallow. Yeah. And so uh, one of the questions he has is, well, is this steepening feel something that's only for really good players who get it too shallow? Or is this a feel that uh, can be used more broadly? Well, yeah. it's, it's for everybody. And, and here's- There you go, question answered. Here's, it's for everybody. Because I got that question from five different people. They thought, oh, that's good, that's good for uh, Rory McIlroy or somebody that's getting it off the right forearm, but it's no, not gonna be. Okay. okay, we gotta talk about what shallow is first, okay. all right? So yeah. when people start, when, initially, when they start trying to figure out how to do this move right here, it, they don't make the move this way. Here becomes the first misunderstanding. They start trying to do it they start trying to do it with their shoulders and their arms. So they keep doing this, which they think, and yes, it would, that would stand the club way too much up. If you watch how I do it, when I start down, my hands and arms are coming right in here. And as the handle comes down, the heel of the clubs comes out. So I'm shallowing dramatically mm -hmm. my arms. You want your arms to be shallow, but you don't want the club head behind your hands to shallow the club. Because as soon as the club head goes this way, yeah. you're going to have to figure out how to catch it up. Okay. So shallow means your arms are shallow and the club is coming in here. That's, the, that's how the momentum of the club yeah. works because this thing wants to go this way. Yes. It doesn't want to go that way. Because you're so, on that side of the golf ball. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just, this, this weighs about 12 ounces up here. And the minute you start down, it now weighs about three or four pounds of force. Mm -hmm. And that force is wanting to go this way. You have to be doing something to offset the fact that the club wants to go here to actually get it where you want it. Okay. So a even, lot of people who feel like they're too steep already on the way down are very scared to do this move because they're like, well, that's just going to exacerbate my Okay, so, so, so then you go, they're too steep. Why are they too steep? Yeah. Because when they start down, this, they're, they're not, their body isn't staying here and they're not doing this. They're steep because they're twisty out of the top. Show the face on of this. Uh, this I think is very, uh, a huge difference that people might not see. So take your, your backswing here. And so when Mike is doing this, I could just see, now make your, the Molaska, see this? The shoulder is basically staying here. Now, if I were to do this, Mike, go to the top. This is a lot of, yeah. this shoulder going open is a lot of what this what steep is it's not an actual standing of the shaft right so again what people end up doing because your, your concept let's go back to concepts yeah everybody thinks when they get here that they're what they're trying to do is get off their right side and fire their hips yeah so that's that's the concept so your brain you get up here and the first move you're trying to make is you think you're supposed to go like that well if that's the first move you make you're going to have a really hard time ever getting the club in the right place coming down because your body's getting is rotating too soon uh -huh. too much so like i say where most people get is they get up here in the first move to make the club go out rather than just letting the handle come down and the heel of the club go out like this yeah okay so rather than being up here and having the handle of the club go down and the heel of the club go out now there's no unhinging of my wrists here yeah there's none it's just it's just this little move right here so I make that move and then I turn into the ball. Here's where most people go. They go like this. Yeah. So they try to turn their bodies and they try to get the club out this way. Well, I no, that's totally wrong. This is where from watching your YouTube videos and then trying it on the range myself, I started hitting ex pulls. extremely fat pulls. Yeah. And uh, so, and I had, so I, I had heard on one of your, your videos about this heel leading. Okay. And what I'm seeing in person that's the only difference is, is that I was still doing my old body rotation as I was doing it. Exactly. And uh, that's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. So, so you're saying people ha are going to have to keep the shoulder more in place as the heel is going towards the, the ball like this? Right. So I got the heel going towards the ball. Yeah. So... The club. But it's not a two-part thing. It's not like down and then around. No, no, no. Okay. You're taking the momentum of the club. It's one constant motion. Right. And actually, your hip is what's going to make. How your hip is reacting to this is what will keep your shoulders turning. We'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. So what's happening is the handle's coming down, and the heel of the club's working out in front of you mm -hmm. like that. 
Now, once you make this little move right there, and if yeah. your body's in the right sequence, then all you do is just let the momentum of the club go through the ball. So, but if but if you try to hold your shoulders back, or if you tip it out like this, yeah, we're in trouble. So the handle comes down, mm -hmm. and the heel of the club pivots out like that, and then you just go with it. So for a person who's a long time early body opener, yeah. First move down. A good feeling might be to lead everything with the heel, like this. Yeah. yeah. What's a good feeling? Well, yeah. That do that again. A good feeling is going to be this handle has to come down and the heel of the club goes out. It's not an unhinging of your wrist. Nicholas talked about in his book. He talked about it's impossible to release the club too soon from yes. the top. Uh -huh. Well, I, I spend time with Jack and, when, and I'm around him all the time. When I ask him release. I said, Jack, you said it was impossible to release the club too soon, and I did this to him. Yeah. He goes, well, what's that? Yeah, right. I said, well, that's release. He says, no, that's not my release. That's, that's a Jack Nicholas impression yeah, I so, can hear. So that's <laughs> yeah, right. little... yeah. Okay, so, so Jack's definition of release uh -huh. was he was at the top, uh -huh. the weight of the club was here. Yep. His definition was that he wanted to get the club head back out in front of him as soon as he could, and he didn't feel like he could do that too soon. He didn't feel like he could do this too soon. It had nothing to do with the unhinging of his wrist. This was going down and that was going out. See, there's the deal right there. Yeah, I had heard Nicholas had said once that he wanted to feel like the club head was going to get to the ball before the buttons on his shirt. Yes, he also he felt like the buttons of his shirt were behind the ball and he never, I just talked to him three or four days ago. Uh -huh. I was with him for three days, two yeah. days. He said his whole career, he never one time from the top down felt his hips unwind. He felt like his hips, they didn't do anything. And this is where people get in trouble because you watch slow motions of Nicholas's swing and you see him when he was young and, and even in the 80s, massive legs. Yeah. Ma and people say, look at the leg drive of Nicholas. It's not what he was thinking though. It was well, just an effect. No, no and, we, and he figured out when we start talking about forces, mm -hmm. a lot of these old guys, Sam Snead and Jack and these guys, Hogan, they actually figured out how to offset the force of the club coming out in front of you okay. with their legs, which made their hips turn. Right. But they weren't trying to turn them. He's so powerfully getting it out in front of him that uh, it's like a, a stability and braking system, right. these strong legs, that actually right. gave him stability into repeatable golf shots. Right. So he, he learned how to use direct and use momentum of the club so that the timing of the face through the ball was minimal. See, I can feel as soon as I start to do this on my own, I feel like the toes going at it when I do this. Yeah, because you're trying to shut the face down. You don't have to shut the face down. That's better. And then you just let the momentum of the club go through the ball. You just direct and let it go through the ball. So you're all, it, me watching you, you're already significantly better because you're not dragging the handle and shutting the face as much and your divots are shallower and the ball's up in the air. That was a really good shot. I'm like, uh, dumbstruck here. It's nice when you feel like you've been possessed by a good golfer. Like, that doesn't, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what most people, when I get working with them, we spend some time yeah. and they start going through the concepts and skills they need. The, the first thing they say is, it can't be that simple. Yeah. I go, well, yes, it is. Now, if you want me to be complex and start talking about pronation right. and supination mm -hmm. and muscle firing patterns into and all that yeah. kind of, I can make it as complicated as we want. But once you understand really what you're trying to do, it gets really simple. Then wherever people go with that, after they start doing it and they start hitting the ball better, they go, you know, if this guy's right, then most of the things I've been trying to do, well intended, may have not been the easiest way to do it. And I go, you're right join me. I did it my whole career. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm here is because I went through that process and now I've kind of figured out what I had with a golf club relative to a baseball swing when I was 17 years old. Now I know sure. why it worked. Hit, hit a couple shots for us while I get the next. Uh, and so, so re reiterate in a more of a Malaska for dummies way, how do we get the shaft working in front of us without getting the toe shut and hitting pulls? Okay. Well, when you so, get up here, first of yeah. all, when you start down, yeah. it, it, it feels like you're taking, this is the part of the club you're swinging right here, the back part, the heel, you're not, not this. This is going to catch up because of the physics of the swing. Yeah, you don't have to do anything extra to twist no. it. So, so yeah. there's been guys, there's been people down, down through the ages, and when I, none of this stuff that I have or anybody that's out there hasn't discovered anything. No, it's an it's old been, game. Yeah. It's an old game. Concepts have been around. People have re-termed it, rephrased it, and said, look what we discovered. 
is, it might be self-discovery, but it's been out there, right. okay? So when you get up here, when you start down with the handle, if you're working the club right, if there was a, if there was a block of wood right here, yep. and you were coming down, this is... and this is the blade of the ax, okay. you're, boom, hitting the blade of the ax, boom, without unhinging your wrist. So you're going like mm -hmm. this. You're not going to hit the flat of the ax. No, show, you're not going to. the wrong way where you would, yeah. Well, see, then uh -huh. you're just taking the blade of the ax, and you're hitting it yeah, with the you side get, of the ax. The side. Yeah. Now you're putting it into it. Yeah, so the picture is, I'm up here, and I start down, and the handle comes down, and the blade, which is mm -hmm. this, of the ax, is working out. Then once you get there, then you just Now, if, if you were to be there with, with an ax, or even a golf club weighted ax, and you were to do it, you really wouldn't want to, like, drill it into that wood with your body, because it wouldn't, it just would, it would, like, leave the ax behind. You would, it would be really, it would be aggressive with the arms and hands, wouldn't it? Okay. The feeling of it. Now, could you please do that for me one more time so I can show how, how far off people can, uh, that. Now, show me what you tried to do to make it work, what you did with your body. No, no, I'm, I was saying that that was wrong, but yeah, but this would feel like, uh, that's not going to really hit right. it very hard. Right. Yeah, because I'm leaving everything, uh, the axe that, behind That's here. correct. If I wanted to, to put it like if uh, somebody was going to give me $100,000 for every inch I got the axe into this wood, I would go, Yeah. I, that would be aggressive. Well, yeah, yeah, you'd, and there's, we're going to show you how your body moves to offset momentum to create ex, an acceleration. It's, your body is yeah. moving to, to direct momentum and force. Mm -hmm. And if it does it correctly, you create a tremendous amount of speed and you do it in a manner that your body can handle it so it can time it. Okay. The timing becomes, rather than you having to time it, momentum and gravity and centripetal force to it. So I tell people all the time, what I'm showing you how to do here, if you go out, once you get the feel for what you're doing, if you go out and you do this, and your club drops to the ground, yeah. it's going to work. So if gravity's constant, okay. so if you go out one day, yep. and you let your club go and it floats in the air, yeah. then we're going to have to make some changes. But as long as yeah. these forces around us are constant, mm -hmm. which they are, yep. once you understand how you're trying to use them, they are going to drive more of your swing than you are. All you're doing is just kind of... Mm -hmm helping them. So hopefully you'll have less and less of these rounds where uh, you got out of the car and you just weren't feeling it that day and yeah. your timing was off and blah blah blah. See, well, So what are you yeah. timing? Yeah. See I don't have those rounds. I mean yeah we all play bad, we all have rounds, but for me now it's so easy to feel what I'm trying to do with those forces. Mm -hmm. I can make three or four practice swings and go to the first tee and just rip it mm -hmm. as long as I'm loose, which becomes another part of the thing. But uh, because those forces are constant. So once I, once I know how to use momentum, yeah. and I know how to direct it, standing up here <coughs> and hitting a ball and hitting it solid, I mean, that's the first full swing I've made today. Yeah. And I'm 62, and my, you know, I, so it's not about... No caveats allowed on this channel. No caveats. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching that. Uh, I wanted to let you know about this thing that's on the channel that you can get in the link for, in the description below. It's called The Source of Power. So over on this website right here, You'll see the source of power. It's all about uh, different instructors talking about different, very, very like-minded instructors talking about how power is actually created. I think it's going to be very eye-opening for you guys, and you're really going to enjoy it. So, it's in link in the description below. It's a great way to support the channel, and uh, it'll really be eye-opening for anybody that gets it.